I'm Scott L. Miller and welcome to another Camera Cafe. Today, we're going to be talking about my favorite camera of all time. Now, back when I used to do film photography, this is back in the late 1980s, early 1990s, I used to work a lot with SLRs. Uh, but my favorite camera was actually an Olympus rangefinder, which didn't seem to me at the time like a camera that I was going to fall in love with. It's a single fixed lens, it's a prime only, very limiting, just it took a lot of options away. And yet I found myself freed by using such a simple device. I didn't have to worry about focal lengths, I didn't have to worry about changing lenses. I knew exactly what the camera would do in every instance, and I love the range finder format. I found it very comfortable to hold and use and exciting and it made me carry my camera. A lot of my best photography when I was younger was done using the rangefinder because it encouraged me to take pictures. Whereas my SLR, it was simply more work. When I first got it, of course, I was excited about the SLR and I spent a lot of time taking it out and doing things with it. But when I really got into photography more, I found that the rangefinder was at least for me, the majority of what I wanted to use. It made me happy as a photographer. Today in the digital era, I have found myself still gravitating towards the same format and the same vendor. I do use Olympus an awful lot. I'm filming this on the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II, which I absolutely love as a full mirrorless DSLR equivalent mirrorless style flagship camera. It is fantastic. I love it. It is so highly recommended Olympus does such a good job and always has right going back decades but my favorite cameras from Olympus are actually not their flagships they are their pen line and the pen line is more or less the same as the uh, RC line or extremely similar to the RC line that I used in the 80s and 90s there's this one fly flying around my face today uh, and today Olympus makes a couple different pens. Uh, officially, there are four lines, but one of them has not been made in a long time. There is the, they're all known as the EPs or the electronic pens, but it is the pen line. There's the EPL, which is the light line. This is the entry level to the series. There's technically an even more entry level that they have not made in a very long time. So we're not gonna talk about that because it probably won't exist ever again, realistically. The EPL line or EP Lite is the main series. This is the one that most people think of when we talk about Olympus Pen. It's the one that most people are going to buy. It is the most cost effective, but it is an excellent camera on its own. It simply has fewer features, but its quality is right up there with the best ones. The midline, which takes the EP light and adds just a little bit more user control, a few more features, is the EP line. They simply remove the light from the name. Finally, at the top of the range, we have the EPF. This is the flagship. I don't think F stands for flagship, but it could. Uh, and there's so far only one model made in this range. In the EP lights, there have been 10. In the EPs, there have been seven. In the F, there is only one. Currently, it still ranks as the flagship. However, it is not currently available. So if you're looking for it, you have to get it used. The EPL line is currently at model 10. And that's what I'm going to show you today is the EPL line. However, the one I'm going to show you, this is my current favorite camera. I've been using it for years. Absolutely love it, is the EPL 9. I'm going to take a moment to talk about this. The EPL 8, 9, and 10 actually have almost exactly the same specs. They have the same sensor. They have the same... Uh, optic options, obviously, because these are um, uh, micro four thirds interchangeable lens cameras. So you're getting the same lenses across them, uh, the same image processor, all the same features, all the same lineup. So whether you're looking at the eight, the nine or the 10, you're really looking at the same camera. I'm sure there are some very subtle under the hood differences and definitely they look just a little bit different, but they are essentially the same camera. You have a large viewfinder on the back. It's flippy in multiple directions. It will not swing around to the front. So this makes it kind of difficult to use for a lot of video uh, situations. It can be tough for vloggers, but it does do excellent video. The EPL line is still only going up to the 16 megapixel sensor. This is the last generation or technically two generations back sensor from Olympus, but it is a very, very good sensor. This is one that is highly respected uh, and still able to turn out professional results. 
for those who have never looked at this, currently a lot of top-end cameras or very high-end cameras such as the iPhone 13 still use a 12 megapixel uh, camera and they get amazing results. 12 megapixels is often considered the threshold that you need for really high-end photography. Going below that starts to become a challenge. You could make do with 8 or 10, but 12 really gives you the flexibility that you're looking for and the image quality so you can use in, in some enlargement situations. Moving up to 14 or 16, you get a noticeable boost above the 12. So if you're happy with the results of an iPhone 13, which is an excellent camera, this from a megapixels perspective is going to blow that away. It also has a much larger sensor. Micro Four Thirds is the smallest of the professional size sensors. So this is larger than even a one inch sensor. If you're looking at things like uh, uh, the, the high end, the really high end specialty cameras for uh, uh, iPhones, or not for, for Android phones, like Xiaomi, they're only at, in some very specific cases, getting up to a one inch sensor. The Micro Four Thirds is a bit larger than that. So this is a pretty big sensor to start with. Yes, it's the smallest of the professionals. It's smaller than, than AP, uh, APS. It is smaller than uh, full frame. It's certainly smaller than medium format, but it is a large sensor nonetheless. So you get that big sensor quality out of it. You're able to get real bokeh. You're able to get real depth of field control because it is pretty big. Of course you can get better, but it, it's very much in the professional range. Many, many, many professionals opt for Olympus and Panasonic Micro Four Thirds and Blackmagic Micro Four Thirds uh, sensor sizes. They make a lot of sense for a lot of utilization, especially things like vloggers and wildlife photographers. Those really lean heavily towards Micro Four Thirds as being uh, a good choice for them. So the fact that it's a 16 megapixel is not really a big deal and it's not that old of a sensor and this is what they were currently selling uh, when they last had a new model of the EPL line. We are expecting that the EPL 11 will be the jump to the last generation 20 megapixel sensor. That is typically how the EPL line works. They keep the sensors a little bit behind. The EP line, which is currently available, however, only in uh, Europe and Asia. It's not available in, I believe, the African and definitely not in the North or South American markets. That takes this form factor, this beautiful, and, and I have to note, all of these come in beautiful colors. They often come in black, uh, often in white, and normally in at least one other color. This is the Mocha, uh, which is my personal favorite. It's just, it's classy. It looks great with the silver lenses, um, but the black and the white both look very good. There has been a denim blue, which is a collector's item. It's very cool. Most of them come with different colors. The EP line currently only comes in black and white, and the EP7 has released after the EPL10. So if you're looking at it in a timeline, it's something like the EP6, then the EPL8, the EPL9, the EPL10, and then the EP7. So the EP7 is a serious step up from this particular model, uh, but also a large step up in price. These, uh, normally you're going to be picking up used around $350 maybe cheaper, sometimes a little bit more, uh, but they're very approachable. Uh, the EPL 10, you're going to be looking at easily $100 more than the 9, um, which is just a few dollars more than the 8. So I highly recommend, look at the EPL 8 and 9 if you're looking for uh, a pretty uh, affordable, approachable, smaller form factor, carry it around camera. These can be really, really excellent. And they can use the entire range of Micro Four Thirds lenses. So you have all those Panasonic, all those Lumix, all those Leica, all those Mzuiko lenses out there, which huge lineup, plus a lot of third parties like Seven Artisans um, that work on the Micro Four Thirds platform. You have a lot of flexibility in lenses. And because of the Micro Four Thirds format, those lenses tend to be pretty affordable. Put a $50 or $60 uh, body cap lens on this bad boy and you've got an amazing camera for doing street photography at extremely low cost. The EPL7 steps up the processor and the sensor, but it is last generation. That's really worth noting. The EPF uh, also uh, or the Pen F, as they actually just call it. Everybody refers to it as the Pen F, uh, but the e it's an electronic pen, so it's the EPF. Um, already had the sensor and processor that's in the EP7, but previously, but it also has, what's important to note, more dials on top. You have more manual control. With this camera, yes, you can get a lot of that control, but you're doing a lot of it with the touch screen on the back, and it's a beautiful touch screen. It works pretty well, uh, but it's not multi-touch, which Olympus has been uh, hesitant to move to, but it does give you a lot of, you know, I can, I can do things I need to do, but I have to do a lot more work to get to that. With the, e, with the, the Pen F line, all those things are going to be in dials and you can get to it very quickly. So the F really is meant around uh, professional usage and can replace your flagship cameras in a way that the EPL and EP normal cannot. 
I would love the EPF. It is basically a collector's item and very expensive, even used. And it is still an amazing camera, even though it's a couple generations old in some ways of looking. The Olympus OMD OM1, the newest flagship, is the first to upgrade the sensor beyond the traditional 20 megapixels. So let's go back and look at this real quickly. The EM1 Mark I, or just the EM1, had the same 16 megapixel sensor that is in these. So if you're looking at the EPL line or an older EP uh, before the EP7, that will have the 16 megapixel. If you go far enough back, you'll get the 12 megapixel, which is still adequate. If you're looking for just an, an introductory camera, you want to play around with Micro Four Thirds and see if you like it, you might be able to get one of those for around $100 if you get to the older sensor. So consider that. That, that may be fun to play with, and then if you do anything to it, you don't care and replace it with something, something newer. The uh, flagship line with the, the EM1 Mark I had this sensor. The Mark II that we're recording on now and the Mark III use the 20 megapixel traditional sensor, and that's the one available in the EP7, which I don't have here. I would recommend it in white. That's the one I would like. If anyone wants to send me one, absolutely that is the camera I'm looking for. The EP7 in white would be amazing. I really want to play with that uh, and give you guys results, but it is the same sensor and processor and everything as the camera we're recording on. It's just a different form factor. Um, it is worth noting, real quick, before I get to the other sensors, this camera is excellent for video, but it does not have audio inputs. I'm also not using the audio inputs on my EM1 right now. I am using a Tascam recorder and I sync up the audio in post-production and that works just fine. It does have built-in microphones, so syncing up is no problem at all. Uh, I can use this for video essentially as good as the one that we're using right now. It's perfectly good for that, but it does use a much smaller battery, so it doesn't last as long. For those wondering about megapixels, you need 8 megapixels to pull off 4K video, and these are crop-on videos, so they're basically using 8 megapixels in the middle of the sensor uh, to do the video. So the fact if you're looking at doing video with these using a 16 megapixel or a 20 megapixel is going to make essentially no difference uh, in, in, as far as megapixel count goes. It just doesn't matter. The newest OM1 still has a 20 megapixel sensor, but it is a stacked sensor, so it has some new technology. It is not the same 20 megapixel sensor as the EM1 Mark II and Mark III. So there is an upgrade. However, a lot of professionals testing the OM1 have said that that upgrade is pretty small. It is not the giant leap of sensor technology that they were hoping for, and that's not a bad thing. It is a move forward but it has not provided a ton of new features. So if you're looking for just a tiny tweak or you're willing to spend the money on a brand new camera, obviously the OM1 will give you a little bit better than these older cameras, but these older cameras were so good that you really may be in a position where these are going to meet your needs in a really good way at a very low price. So worth considering. The uh, uh, Pen F is the same as the EP7 now, the same 20 megapixel sensor, the same uh, processor, just with more dials, a little bit more, and it has a, uh, very importantly, as a viewfinder. The, the EPL and the EP lines do not have a viewport. That's a big deal. Um, it does make these smaller and cheaper, uh, and for casual photography, vacation photography, street photography, these may be better. But if you want a more flexible camera with just more power, that viewfinder can be a really big deal, and uh, that's what only the F line is going to have those. Overall, I love how these look. They, they're fun for me to carry. People talk to me about my camera. If I show this, people come up to me and say, I, I love your camera. It is so cute. It's so neat. I wish I had one of those. People are jealous of having this camera. It's enough that it looks really serious, but it's also cool enough that it looks neat sitting on your table while you're having coffee. You don't have to pretend you have a big camera rig. It's, it's, it finds a nice middle ground of having a professional camera that takes amazing photographs, but also not looking like a big DSLR or mirrorless, you know, black, and, and you, don't, you, know, you don't need to put a big lens on it. It gives you a different approach to how you look and how you feel when, when doing photography. And for a lot of people, me included, having that casual, I'm just gonna go out and take pictures feeling matters a lot. It helps me get out and do photography to, in many times when I wouldn't bring my big EM1 Mark II. Even though I love it, it's a great camera. It's got better battery life. It has a higher resolution image. I just don't wanna bring it around. It's, it's too much to worry about. With this, I feel comfortable just, I put a, a wrist strap on, I carry it with me, or I put it in a pocket, I can put it in a bag, and I have a camera with me, 
And sometimes the most important thing is the camera that you're going to have with you, that's the camera that's gonna take your best pictures. So this is uh, the kind of camera that for me really does that. You could get uh, cameras in this form factor that don't have interchangeable lenses, and you can get some really cool options with that, such as the Ricoh GR3. There's some fantastic cameras out there with built-in zoom or built-in fixed. Uh, the, the Fuji uh, X100V comes to mind. Absolutely fantastic cameras. This has the advantage of being interchangeable and can work as part of a system. For me, I keep a pen and I keep a full EM-1. They use the same lenses. I'm able to move back and forth. If I wanted to get a Panasonic Lumix GR6, for example, they would use the same lenses. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Blackmagic, Panasonic Lumix, and Olympus cameras, OM systems, cameras that will share those lenses. That has a lot of value. The lenses tend to be more approachable, more affordable, uh, really high quality, and very portable which is really important in a lot of circumstances. So I love this system for that reason. Um, and I do find that, now I'm a prime lens shooter, so most of the time I'm gonna be putting on a specialty. So this is the 45 millimeter, which I absolutely love, shooting on the 25 millimeter. I like to use prime lenses and that's a really big deal for me. And using something like the EPL9, I'm able to go out and switch which prime lens I'm using and have a very different shooting experience at a different time. I can put on a big zoom when I need it, I can put on uh, a mid-range, I can put on a body cap lens, I can do all kinds of different things. My camera will look different, uh, my camera will feel different, and it, it, it's as if I have a whole range of cameras. If I use something uh, with a fixed lens, I would give a lot of that up. So this, for me, is a really great middle ground in functionality and price because very few of those fixed lens cameras come down in price the way that these do and then you can build up a lens collection and if you want to move up to the em1 you want to move up to the the pen f all those things are within your reach because you already have the lenses it's just a matter of different bodies it also gives you the comfort of wearing out your camera just put your lenses on a new replacement body when the time comes so this camera it makes me happy. I love how it looks. I love how it feels in my hand. I love taking it out and taking uh, pictures and video. I love that it works as a backup to my main camera. I love that it shares lenses and it lets me get into the system. It's one of the cameras I recommend most, especially if you're not a professional and you're looking for something that's simply going to be exciting, something that's gonna encourage you to be a photographer, something that's going to inspire you. This, this is the camera I have found at, at the very top of my list. Are there, I love having many cameras, I love having variety, but this one, more than any other, makes me happy, excited, and makes me go out and take pictures. Thanks for joining me. I'm Scott Miller. This is the Camera Cafe. I hope to see you next time.